Hello and welcome to Women's World. I am Oinola Salim. Today we continue our amazing women series. We just can't get enough of celebrating the feats of women who in their own way have contributed and are still involved in the development of Africa. On Life on Top, we will meet a woman who once shone by her community has now become one of the most powerful in that same community. We will also bring you up to date with the latest headlines in the world of women. On trends, we find out why women love juries. The reasons may not be as simple as you think. For this and more, stay tuned. But for now, we go straight to our issue for the day. The past and the present support what the eye plainly sees. Women throughout Africa do much more than their share of the work in many spheres of daily life. Their contributions have in no small way paved the way for many improvements that have been recorded in the continent. Fantu Bensuda is a Gambian lawyer with a reputation for being a dogged investigator. Not surprising as she has reached the pinnacle of international justice by becoming the first woman and the African to head the International Criminal Court. Justice, real justice, is not a pick and choose system. To be effective, to be just, and to be a real deterrent the Office of the Prosecutor's activities and decisions will continue to be based solely on the law and the evidence. Bensuda first came to prominence in international legal circle as a trial lawyer at the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda and later served as its senior legal advisor. The 51-year-old lawyer entered the Gambian Civil Service in 1987 as a public prosecutor. Another interesting fact about this amazing woman is that she holds a master's degree in international maritime law and law of the sea and as such is the first international maritime law expert of Gambia. Violence and especially violence against the most vulnerable in society, children and women, surrounds us all. This is unacceptable and my job is to ensure justice for victims of genocide, crimes against humanity, and war crimes in countries who have signed up to the court. History has taught us that for lasting and sustainable peace, justice must be done. Another woman making African women proud is Nkosazana Dlamini Zuma, the first woman to lead the commission of the African Union and a veteran South African politician. The eldest of eight children, Lamini Zuma would describe herself as a visionary leader with incredible passion for the African continent. One would have to agree as she has led a number of peace and security initiatives to the Democratic Republic of Congo, the Union of the Comoros and the Kingdom of Lesotho. I'm a woman and I'm a mother of four girls. But I also have grown up both in the rural areas and in the urban areas. And I, when things went so good here, I struggled to make sure that we are all free. I participated in the struggle. But basically, I'm just, I'm just a human being who loves humanity. Not just a visionary leader, Dlamini Zuma is a fighter for freedom. While pursuing her studies in the early 1970s, she became an active underground member of the African National Congress to fight against the apartheid government. This involvement forced her into exile before she completed her degree. Omrilandin Inkosazane completed her studies in the United Kingdom, earning a degree 
in medicine. Her work to help improve lives on the African continent has earned her both domestic and international recognition. Every time a woman is able to occupy a particular position or take a particular responsibility, it means that has been open for more women in the future. And I also think it also just inspires women wherever they are to see that we can uh, get to any position. If you mention the phrase, the sung bird of Masulu, for many Malians, the name Omo Sangari comes to mind. The Grammy Award winning musician became a singer at a young age in order to help her mother feed their family. Apart from music, Sangari is also known for being an advocate for women's rights, opposing child marriage and polygamy. She has been a goodwill ambassador for the United Food and Agriculture Organization, and she even has a car named after her, the Om Sang. Where Taylor are going to encounter us, they give us some attention. And this is how we decided to sit at the fish market every day. Thousands of women, including ITPs, internally displaced persons, went. It was the first time in our history in Liberia where Muslim women and Christian women were coming together. We sent out a signal to the world that we, the Liberian women in Ghana, at this conference, we are fed up with the war. Our next amazing woman is 2011 fighting, Nobel Peace Laureate, Lema Bowie. We can do the last for this edition, but certainly and not the list. Time, Bowie is a Liberian peace activist responsible for being part of the women who led a women's peace movement that helped bring an end to the second Liberian civil war in 2003. Her efforts were instrumental in ending the war and ushering a period of peace in the country. These women have indeed been a key in Africa's sustainable development. Truly amazing things done by amazing women, the list goes on. Coming up, we meet a remarkable woman on Life on Top and on Trends, it's juries, juries, juries. First, let's see what events made the headlines this week. Wife of the United States President Michelle Obama and her predecessor, Laura Bush, have come together to draw attention to efforts to improve women's health and welfare in East Africa. In a summit of the Wives of African Leaders, organized by herself and Laura Bush, Michelle said Africa was at the hub of global development. The summit aims to promote women's well-being on the continent. While addressing the women, Laura Bush announced a new initiative aimed at bringing together first ladies from around the world. We want to support first ladies around the world by convening them annually to highlight the significant role that they can play. We want to support first ladies around the world by convening them annually to highlight the significant role that they can play in addressing pressing issues. 
Michelle Obama, accompanying her husband on his three-nation trip to the continent, spoke of Africa's rich characteristics and the importance of investing in women and girls' health and education. Uh, at the hub of uh, global development, um, this particular event, because of what we've said, women and girls are at the key to our salvation as a civilization. And we all have to understand that as we make decisions about uh, investment in health and it's uh, at the... The Obama-Bush combination spotlights U.S.'s interest in Africa. Lydia Nsakara made history when she became the first female member of FIFA's powerful executive committee and now she plans to use football to help bring development to her home country Burundi as well as the rest of Africa. Burundian football has been given direction and stability since Nsakara took over since 2004 with supporters crediting her firm brand of leadership. She says the secret is in ensuring everything is above board. All play to Kuanayo. After the war, Players had abandoned the country for Rwanda and the DRC. When I came in, my objective was to ensure we begin competing in tournaments and to make the player transfer process easy for our players. Nsakara says the issue of gender was never a factor. Your position helps people see the kind of leader and person you are. And if I had thought of myself as a woman first, then that would be all the men would see. I am a football administrator first, then the rest follows. In the meantime, she is determined to use a position on the FIFA Executive Committee to show how football can make an impact both on and off the pitch. Five years after a rescue from Colombian rebels, former presidential candidate Ingrid Betancourt says that for the first time she can see the possibility of peace between the government and Revolutionary Armed Forces of Colombia, FARC. For the first time in my life, I see the possibility of a peace process which ends with peace. Betancourt, who was held captive by the FARC for over six years, added that the two sides needed to cut down the amount of time it takes to reach a peace deal. If the FARC are thinking of making a stand, like when they were negotiating peace with Pastrana's government, they are wrong, because Colombians have to see results fast. Betancourt was kidnapped in southern Colombia in February 2002 and was held captive by FARC until a rescue by Colombian army commandos on the 2nd of July 2008. The FARC has been at war with the Colombian government for nearly half a century. <laughs>